Greetings everyone. In this video we're going to look at API management, the developer portal, uh, which is very handy for both your internal developers or if you have external users that are consuming your API. Before we get started in uh, the developer portal, let's take just a quick look at what we've got configured uh, in, in our Azure API management instance regarding users, groups, subscriptions, etc. All the configuration for developer portal is going to be listed down in here and at one point or another you'll need to publish your portal. Uh, you can either publish it here or you can do that in the admin interface of the developer portal as a admin. Uh, I've already published it here uh, and also enabled cores and that puts a, a global cores policy on all APIs. If you've watched the last uh, one of the other videos we've done before on Azure Active Directory integration, uh, I've also enabled Active Directory. Right, So that's just kind of the setup there. Uh, with that I Azure Active Directory identity, uh, we've enabled that, right? Uh, and with that, um, I have a Active Directory group here um, that I've imported at Active Directory group. So anybody's in in this group in my AD tenant uh, is going to have access, right? Uh, these other ones are, are a couple of custom groups I've created here: external partner company, just some man a manually created group with the add option, and then I've added a few users into those groups, right? So just as a quick look, if you look at users, you can see here what groups they're a member of. And as an example, I have a bogus user that's a local user, and he's a member of that external partner company. And then I also have a bogus AD user, uh, which is a member of my AD group, right? Uh, and, and just to kind of set that stage, let's just go look at AD real quick. Um, and I've got a couple of, uh, this is that security group we just talked about. Right, and then also um, here's the users I was referring to. So uh, I've got this bogus user here is the one, I, and we'll actually we may test uh, test out this test user and get that guy logged in as well. Right, so um, starting here, that's our our users and groups, right, and that gives the somebody access to the developer portal. That's what this is providing here. Beyond that, we need to actually set up how we group our APIs. Remember that's products, right? And with products, we can say I have a product and you can give that product access to various groups. So there's the group we have, two groups here have access to this example product. And in the settings here also, uh, it's important to note require subscription and require approval. Um, this doesn't override anything that's already on the API. If the API requires a subscription, it requires a subscription, right? Um, but this particular will access, uh, allow for access. Now you can prompt for require approval too when a user requests, right? So this can allow a user to sign up for a particular product uh, via the portal. And we'll take a look at that in a minute, right? Uh, and then lastly is you can associate subscriptions with a product so that you don't have to give individual developers access on a one-by-one -one basis. So they could share, a, essentially share a subscription key. Uh, but what we're gonna look at here in a minute is, is requesting access, right? So this is uh, essentially how the setup that we're gonna be working with. And you know, a couple ways, you can either go to the developer portal by you know clicking this link, but I'm already logged in as an admin, so, uh, and, and there's also one on the homepage here. Um, I'm also logged in as an admin, so I'm going to go ahead and launch it as a regular user um, in another browser window here. And when we're, we hit the main page, this is again, this is fully customizable. Obviously, I'm not Consoto, um, but this is uh, fully editable in the uh, admin interface there. Um, now, I'm not signed in, but we've, we've allowed anonymous access on the site, and you can, you can turn that off uh, in, in your portal um, by going over to... to uh, uh, to our identities here in settings and you can require all anonymous access goes to the sign-in page only if you want to right so that's one thing you can do but I, I don't have it turned on obviously so just to browse around you can see what's publicly available so anything that's assigned to the guest uh, group so you remember in in our security we have groups and one of the built-in groups is guest and this is really anonymous users uh, and whatever product that is associated with, so guest is associated with these two, so you're, we're seeing these two, right? And inside of here, we can look at some of these APIs and their documentation, potentially subscribe. In this case, we're not logged in, so we'd have to log in to subscribe. Um, and we can browse around the API and its associated documentation, right? And uh, whatever documentation is, is presented uh, there in the interface. Um, 
so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main page and sign in first. And I'm going to sign in with a um, but the bogus user it's somewhere. And I think my password is this. Good. It was. Okay. So if we're just looking, just a couple things back to our, you know, start from, you know, we smooth logged in, you'd kind of go here. You can either look at APIs or products that you'll have access to, right? And these are going to be based on what my group, uh, what I have access to from a assignment. So we're logged in as that bogus user, right? He's a member of these groups and those particular groups are assigned to these products, right? So these are those groups assigned to each one of these products, right? Um, so I'm looking at that, that those particular APIs, right? So I could go in and, and this one here is not necessarily fully documented. You can see it's very plain, but let's go into one that we've actually, some of our uh, uh, reference architecture is going to be following moving forward is more heavy, heavily documented. So if we go into this particular API, you'll see it's got an extensive amount of, each one of these methods will have extensive amounts of how, how a sample, what objects are going to be returned, um, the request response, and what to expect, um, and then what, what, what might be an error in returned or in other responses, right? Anything else that, that's going to be fully documented here is this API, right? And on top of this, um, we also have the ability to execute it. Now, if I had a subscription key, I could paste one in and execute the request here to get this information, right? And if, if I just try it, it'll say that I don't, because I didn't provide a key, right? So that's just, this is fine, this is great. Not only that, but it actually shows me lots of ways to actually call this API. So right now, this is just HTTP. Here's what an HTTP request would look like. But if I wanted to do this in C Sharp, here's my C Sharp code, right? Or if I wanted to do this in Java, there's my Java code. And I can simply copy it here and paste it into my application, right? And there's JavaScript as well, right? So just super easy way. So before we do some other cool stuff, uh, I'm going to come back to this and look at these downloadable definitions. It's extremely powerful. We'll, we'll generate a client consuming app in a matter of minutes here in a moment. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and we, we don't have a key for this particular instance. We could use our shared key. Let me just show you what it looks like to request a new key, right? So. If we go back out to the products, and you do this on a on a uh, product, or um, in fact, I'll just go to the starter. Well, example's fine. And I can go here and then say bogus uh, user subscription, right? And I go ahead and create that. Um, and behind the scenes, that's passed off. And this one's already going to be active because we did not set that up to require approval. So immediately, and then uh, as an admin, I'll get an email that looks like this that says uh, somebody signed up, right? And that's kind of an admin email that you would receive behind the scenes. So now if we go look at subscriptions, just so you know, now there's that bogus user subscription that's tied to that product for that user. So as that user now, I can actually go out to the product, to that example product, and now any one of these APIs uh, it's going to actually pre-populate. So let me just go to this test one and go to try. It already has my primary and secondary keys that I can actually select from here. And then now I can actually execute that request. Uh, I think that backend uh, server is probably not running, but it, it'll respond successfully at some point uh, with some information. So that's, that's a little quick tour through. Um, the developer portal. Um, again, we can link that to Azure Active Directory. Um, so you saw there on the, the main page, um, if I sign out, if I were to sign in again, I would have that option. There was a button, a widget button that says uh, sign in with Active Directory, right? And I'll do that in just a moment, but oh, and there's our request finally came back. It was successful. So let's say, hey, I want to build a uh, an API for this, but I don't want to do a uh, one by one on every single operation to copy this and paste this in. What do I do? Well, that's where we use these these Swagger files or open API files. I'm just going to grab two because it's fairly common. It's going to ask me to download this. I already have a copy. I'll save that over uh, that existing copy. I'm going to launch Visual Studio uh, really quick. I'm going to do a new project and I'm just going to do a class library, but you know, this can be anything. I'm just we're, we're pretending we're creating a client uh, for our API, right? So class library, I'm just going to accept the defaults and we've got a project created, right? So with this project created now, 
um, how would we actually set up the API? Well, it's very, very simple, right? So simply go in the project, right click, add REST API client. Now we could point to the Swagger definition if we knew where the URL was, or I'm just gonna, I had the file downloaded, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab that file. And you can give it some, you know, clarification namespace or whatever, and, and it's going to scaffold out everything it needs uh, for us to immediately start consuming this. And you see it here, it even pulled in uh, the resources as models that we needed. These are the objects there. Um, and then as well as all the baked in code for us to literally, we can just start calling this API, right, immediately. Um, so very, very handy to be able to import that into uh, a, a studio project and create your uh, API client that quickly, right? So last but not least, let's go ahead and I'm going to sign out of uh, uh, this particular one. And, and just to show you real quick, uh, let's sign in. And here's that button I was referring to, Active Directory. Uh, and I'm gonna, I've already got my credentials. You know, if I had another user, I would select that. And that is, uh, let's see if this works. I'm not 100% sure of my password, so hopefully that's it. And there we are. Now, if I hadn't signed in before, it would prompt me to finish my profile, quote unquote. And basically, you're just entering your name for display purposes. And then behind the scenes, it actually creates a record for you out in here. Uh, for Active Directory, right? Which then you can assign to groups and what whatnot. So you can see this guy is associated with the API Developers Group. If you remember, uh, that group has access to these products, specifically this one, uh, and that's kind of what we're looking at here. So, and we could request a subscription as well for our Active Directory user. I hope you found this video useful um, about the developer portal. We may have another one in the future about customizing the portal. But uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.